Let's finish up Group B dietary supplements with emerging evidence by looking at collagen, carnitine, curcumin, and ketones. These have a variety of different actions. Um, they're quite popular in the supplement world, but do they work? Okay, let's first of all look at collagen uh, or gelatin, which you can actually get in Jello. So you know, um, if you want to save some money rather than buying expensive collagen, hmm, maybe buying some gelatin would be a cheaper way to go. Um, there, uh, there, there is pretty good evidence that when connective tissue is breaking down, um, using collagen or gelatin uh, to prevent injury um, and tendonitis um, is uh, helpful. So you would like to have something like 15 to 20 grams of uh, either collagen or gelatin about 40 to 60 minutes prior to training. Um, and up to two to three times per day, depending on how many times you're training. If you're training three times a day, then three times um, collagen. Um, this can definitely actively help support your connective tissue, particularly if you're suffering from um, any kinds of pain in your uh, ligaments. Um, so uh, also, if you do have an injury, collagen combined with exercise may reduce the time to return to play uh, for injury, injury uh, repair, tendon repair. Yeah, so promoting uh, ligament strength with gelatin. Um, you can take 15 grams of gelatin one hour or, uh, or so before, um, before working out. This study was uh, looked at uh, 15 grams of gelatin one hour before six minutes of jumping rope, and they saw a twofold increase in collagen synthesis, um, which um, improves collagen uh, tendon strength. L-carnitine is an amino acid derived from lysine and methionine. Um, carnitine is, uh, is pretty rare um, in, the, in the natural world. However, it, it can be made endogenously. Um, it's stored within the heart and within skeletal muscle. It is required for fatty acid transfer, transportation. It's required um, for, um, to uh, reduce lactate accumulation by buffering, um, by buffering lactic acid. Uh, during in, uh, intense uh, endurance exercise, and it may have some antioxidant activities. Um, carnitine in competition could be used in competition greater than 30 minutes. The recommended dose of carnitine would be 1.4 to 3 grams of car carnitine taken as a divided dose um, twice a day for 12 weeks or longer. You would definitely need to make sure that your carnitine supplement is designated NSF safe for, for sports um, and that it's third party tested and clean. Um, it's probably a good idea to take carnitine with carbohydrate. Um, and it's probably ineffective for reducing muscle soreness over fairly short terms. Um, I think a better choice would be creatine um, to reduce muscle soreness rather than carnitine. Here you go, this is, this is the supplementation um, plan. You'd have carnitine with breakfast and carnitine with dinner. Um, let's take a look at curcumin now. Curcumin is um, derived from turmeric. Unfortunately, it has pretty poor bioavailability. Uh, so if you're going to try curcumin in your regimen, you would need to pick curcumin with, um, with um, uh, pepperine or black pepper, um, which improves its bioavailability. It's again anti-inflammatory, it's supposed to improve muscle function. Uh, the jury's out on whether this actually helps. Um, it may do. You need about 500 to 1000 milligrams twice daily. That's the sort of dose that people test. And lastly, ketones. Uh, there's a lot of research that has gone into these ketones. They claim to uh, decrease reliance on, on uh, increase reliance on fat as a fuel source uh, and spare um, carbohydrate stores that claim to improve brain function, that claim to improve recovery. Um, frankly, the data for the effectiveness of ketones, they're very, very expensive, uh, is very poor. And um, I'd say this would be a maybe leaning towards save your money. And definitely, uh, speaking of saving your money, I, I would recommend that you save your money on branch chain amino acids, on alpha lipo lipoic acid, on hydroxymethylbutyrate, on phosphate, on vitamin E, on tyrosine, 
Um, all of these I would save you money on. Uh, magnesium may have some uses for some uh, for some athletes. Some um, there's some evidence that magnesium can improve sleep quality. So if you're having difficulty sleeping, magnesium might be uh, magnesium hydroxide or magnesium citrate, which are very cheap, might be something you would consider to improve sleep quality. Um, bright chain amino acids um, are, are often out there. Um, in, in a lot of different products, they claim they're going to improve um, muscle protein synthesis, reduce muscle soreness, and give you faster recovery times. These are all the claims. Um, the fact of the matter is that when branched chain amino acids are compared to whey protein, um, which is a lot cheaper, you don't need fancy whey protein either. They're just the standard whey protein compared to these expensive branched chain amino acids. There is, uh, plenty, there is no evidence branched chain amino acids are better than whey protein. In fact, there's pretty good evidence that whey protein improves muscular development more than branched chain uh, amino acids. Uh, and there are emerging um, suggestions that branched chain amino acids um, can block uptake of certain amino acids that are used for neurotransmitters in the brain. Um, so I would steer clear of branched chain amino acids and instead choose whey protein um, for your uh, recovery. More and more athletes use these pre-workout um, supplements. There are things like creatine and taurine and tyrosine and citrulline. Um, caffeine we know works and beta alanine we know works. Um, but these things, citrulline, tyrosine, taurine, um, creatine, probably do not work. Taurine is an interesting molecule. It is an antioxidant. Um, so uh, taurine and creatine um, might be used for recovery, um, but not for pre-workout supplements. These would be post-workout supplements. Um, caffeine and beta alanine could definitely be used um, pre-workout. What about beer for athletes? Um, they, unfortunately, um, uh, beer is uh, very negative for, for athletic performance. Um, decreases athletic performance. It's not a great source of calories because it's not high in vitamins and minerals. Um, the, the content is not very good. Sodium content is low, which means it's not absorbed very fast. Um, and it has negative effects on recovery. The alcohol has negative effects on recovery and adaption. However, having said all of that, probably one beer after exercise is not going to harm you. Yeah, here we're looking at alcohol in general reduced muscle glycogen synthesis, reduced cognitive function, reduced sleep quality, uh, reduced power output, and reduced protein synthesis. So best to keep alcohol uh, use to a minimum. Uh, there are supplements that will trigger doping violations, any kind of stimulants, um, some of these pro-hormones that are pro-hormones for testosterone, um, they'll trigger uh, adverse doping findings. Uh, growth hormone and growth hormone peptides can trigger uh, doping findings. There are beta-2 antagonists that are illegal. Um, androgen receptor stimulators are illegal and metabolic um, modulators, metabolic stimulators. Again, all of these will trigger uh, positive doping responses uh, and are not legal. Uh, they're a form of cheating. So having uh, gone through all of these supplements, uh, I would say very definitely that uh, whilst supplements are widely used, um, most athletes do not need to use them. Um, certainly not as many of them as they do. Uh, they are expensive. 80% um, of uh, supplements do not contain what is said on the label. And that's why you need to look only for supplements if you're going to use supplements that are third-party tested and designated as safe for sports. Um, most supplements are not backed up by evidence. Um, so I'd be very, very cautious before you choose um, to use a supplement. And I would use supplements only uh, with the guidance of a medical professional.